Welcome back to the second part of this little video series. In the first video, I went over the Field Day AI app. I created my own image database. I showed you how to import your model into Lens Studio. And I also explained very briefly how to use behavior scripts to trigger events whenever an object is detected. If you haven't watched part one yet and you still need a machine learning model in the first place, watch this video here first. In this video, I will explain my whole process from start to finish, how I made this crystal machine learning lens. We will look at the tween manager, behavior scripts, how to trigger multiple tweens at the same time easily with a tween chain. And as a bonus tip, I can explain very briefly how to ignore the background class, if that is something that you need for your lens. All right, let's go. Before I jump right into the code, I want to make a quick sketch of what I want to achieve in the end. So let's say we detect a rose quartz. I would like to show a soft gradient vignette that matches the color of the stone. I also got inspired by tarot cards, so I added this little UI element for decoration. We want to show the name of the stone, so I added it on the top here. It would be cute to also have a little crystal crown that matches the stone. And to add some final magic touch, I want to have some sparkles. So now that we have a plan, let's get started. So first of all, let's deactivate these progress bars and the rest of the UI, except of this um, output text. This one is the name of the stone that gets detected and we can reuse this for our design. But for this one, I will deactivate the background and only have the name displayed. I also already decided for a font that I want to use, so I'm just gonna drag and drop it in here. And if you select the text, you can change the font in this input field. So let's see how it looks like. Yes, that looks pretty good. It's a bit small, so I will increase the size a little bit. Let's move the text up to the top. And now I can make a new screen image. This will be the tarot frame that I showed you before. So let's name it accordingly. And this one I already prepared. It's just white lines on a transparent background. And I'll just drag and drop it in here. I'll change the stretch mode to stretch so it always like fits nicely into the device. And for the name, I can uh, adjust it a little bit so that it's always in the right place, like this. Awesome. So these are the UI elements that pretty much stay the same for every stone. And now I want to set up all the elements that change based on the stone it detects. So let's start with the gradient frame. This is just a white gradient that we can change the color to whatever we want. So let's drag and drop it in here and create a new screen image. Call it gradient and drop it in here. You can see the tiny gap up here and we will fix it with a stretch again. Now to change the white gradient to a color, we actually need to make a new material for it. So let's click the plus and search for unlit material. This means it just doesn't react to any light sources in the scene. Let's call it gradient. And we can take the base texture and drag and drop it in here. If we change the material now to the gradient, um, it will become white. That is because the blend mode is set to disabled. We can change it here, or if you click on the material and you go into the blend mode here, select normal and we're back again. So now if you change the base color, you can see that the gradient changes the color also. And that's exactly what we want. 
One thing that um, you might notice, the gradient is in front of the tarot frame, so I want to move it on the back. So now everything looks very nice, it doesn't change color yet. I'll change this color back to white for now, also full transparency. So how do we actually change this white gradient to something that matches more with the stones? We can do that by using the triggers that this script sends out whenever a category is detected. So you can see it in here. If this is not ticked, you can just select it. And this just means that whenever a stone is found, it will send out this trigger found and attaches the name of the label um, behind it. So if we go back into our label script, these are the names that the multi-class classification script will use and send it out like this. And we can use this in a behavior script ourselves. So for example, let's create a new script for the amethyst. Let's set up a new behavior script. If you don't have this uh, in your options, you probably need to edit through here behavior first and then you can select it from the scripts. So if we go under on custom trigger, we can input here a trigger name. And this is exactly what this gives us. So let's say we copy paste this in here, found, and then we choose our class name, Amethyst. We want to, just for demonstration, we want to print out a message like Amethyst found. And uh, let's check if this worked. It says amethyst found, perfect. So let's use this behavior script to actually call a bunch of tweens. If you don't know what tweens are, these are helper scripts that easily let you animate and move stuff around. And we can add it into our project by clicking the plus helper scripts and then tween manager. Now let's remove these examples because we don't need them and move it on the, to the top of the project. So now instead of printing a message, I want to run a tween. And before I can do that, I need to set the tween up first. So let's type tween and you get all the cool options that we can use. What we want to do is tween a color value. So let's select that and press OK. Let's go through this. We have to reference an object. Let's drop in here our gradient. This tween also needs a name, so let's call it gradient color and select movement type 2. Now we only have to define a end value. It doesn't matter which color we start with, it will always land on this color. So let's select a purplish color for the amethyst. I think I will drop down the opacity to a hundred, maybe. We don't want this tween to run automatically whenever the lens starts, so let's untick that. And we want to run this when the trigger is found. So we need to get the tween name and put it in here. And that's basically all we have to do. If it recognizes the amethyst now, it changes the color, which is really easy and cool. <laughs> but now when we restart the lens, we still have this white gradient. We don't want that. So I just go in here and drop down the alpha to zero. Now, if we look back into our sketch, um, I have this crystal crown in here <laughs> and uh, I found this really cool model on Sketchfab and I want to give a shout out real quick. I decided to download this model of a crystal crown by Karolina Rinkiewicz. Okay, I will not pronounce this correctly, I'm so sorry. 
I just think this is so gorgeous and it exactly matches the vibe I want to go with with this lens. So huge shout out to Carolina. This is an amazing model. I downloaded it into my resources folder. So let's import the FBX. Whenever you want to add any 3D objects to the user's head, you need to have a head binding. You can add it by this plus and just scroll down until you find head binding. This will automatically add a perspective camera into your project, a head binding and a face occluder. This occluder makes sure that any object that is behind the user's head will be transparent or not visible. So now we can drag and drop it into the head binding. And as you can see, it's already there. Um, it's a bit big and dark, but we will fix that in a second. Let's remove all of the elements that we don't need and just keep the mesh. I'll rename it to stay clean. <laughs> This is way too big, so let's say 0 0.3, still too big. Let's go like this. Also, maybe let's just reset it for a start. Rotate it very nice, scale it down, and now we can position it where we think this should sit correctly. Maybe like just a little bit. I think it's still a bit too big, like maybe something 15. Just a cute little crown. And uh, I don't really like how the space occluder sits so let me adjust this a little bit like this i mean this is just uh, for demonstration purpose <laughs> our model is still pitch black and that is partly because we don't have any light sources in the scene so let's add that by pressing the plus button and add a light and uh, already it looks a bit better but we can do better than this. Um, I noticed that it kind of like floats around, like it's not um, stuck to my head correctly. And this happens sometimes when you have more than one render target. And the solution here is to go into the scene configurations and drag the orthographic camera render target down underneath this one. So now, as you can see, it looks way better and it actually stuck to my head. This happens to me all of the time and sometimes it's not really clear which, which um, order they need to be for it to look good, but you have to play around with it a little bit. Let's set up a material for this crown because it looks pretty boring so far. So the crown looks a bit better now in scene view, but in our preview it's very, very white. And I believe that's because our light source is very strong. <laughs> After probably an hour of playing around with the material, I think I'm happy with the results. And um, my goal here was to set it up that I can match it easily to the different stones just by changing the base color. Let's set this back to white and change the color through a behavior script. And this is basically the same like we did with the gradient. But since now we want to call two tweens instead of one, I would recommend using a tween chain which is basically you only need one behavior script and you call a bunch of tweens at the same time. So let's create a new scene object and call it um, uh, like um, tweens. Let's copy paste the tween in here and now change this one to a tween chain. Um, let's call it Amethyst Tweens and call this one instead of the gradient color. 
as a target scene object, I will put in the tween object we just created. I press all at once and now I can add the names of all the tweens I want to call. So we start with this one, like before. And let's duplicate this. And instead of the gradient, I want to change the crown color. So let's put in this one and call it crown color. Now I also need to call the second tween here. So now if we detect the... Ooh, what happened here? <laughs> Yeah, I think because this one has 100 alpha, let's put it on full transparency. So now the crown also changes color. Awesome. I just cleaned up the project a little bit and moved the perspective camera up. Uh, there's one last tween I want to call whenever a stone gets detected. And that is to um, scale the crown from zero to one, to where it is right now. So let's create a new tween. A tween transform, since we want to scale a 3D object. And let's choose the crown here. We want to scale it to a value and that is 0 0.2 for a start let's scale it to zero and see if that works oh yeah that doesn't work because i need to call the tween of course so let's go into my tween chain here and add the tween as a value. Yes, that looks good. Could be a bit more snappier, I guess. And maybe we can add a little back, but I'm not sure if that will look good. Let's see. Okay, I think we can keep it like this. Basically, these tweens will be the same for all of the stones that get detected. So we built ourselves a little template um, that we can reuse. For example, we can duplicate it um, for the clear quartz. Let's rename everything. So the trigger for the clear quartz will look like this. I will also rename these two. And now, since we referenced <clears throat> the child object here, it will automatically call these tweens. So I just need to change the color here to a... Oh wait, clear quartz. It's probably more white grayish, like this. So if it recognizes the clear quartz now... Yes, we have this one. Oh, the gradient looks a bit off, maybe a bit more whitish, I guess. Yeah. Like this more, and uh, this could also be more white. Mm -hmm. So we can just duplicate this for all of the classes that we have. So let's test it on the phone and see how it looks. Looks good. Let's test the citrine. So one last thing I want to change now is you can see that whenever it detects a background, it also changes the name. And that's not really what we want. <laughs> For this, I will do a tiny bit of coding, but don't worry, this will be really quick. If you also want to ignore the background class, you can just come here in where the previous class gets compared with the current class. So underneath here, we can do another if check. 
if the current class is zero because in our labels the background class is always like has the index zero then we want to return out of the function we don't want to change the the label up here we don't want to send any triggers so we just return out of the function also, if you scroll a bit further down, this else if statement, we can also just comment that out. It just says if none of the classes get detected, also go back to the background label. Let's comment that out. And now if we detect something and then nothing, it just stays in that current class. If we have a new stone like the rose quartz, it changes, but background gets ignored. So, last part of our roadmap is the sparkles. This is the most easy part. Just go into the asset library and click uh, search for sparkles. I will use these ones. These ones. Close this and just place it in the objects panel. Now you can see we have a ton of sparkles going on. Our crown gets still detected. Um, this is a bit too sparkly for my taste. So you can go into this material and just play around with the values a little bit until you think it's fine. I will use a sparkle texture that I always use. It's a bit anime inspired, I feel. So I'll just drag this in here. I deactivate the flipbook and also the rotation. And um, now I will have these cute sparkles. That's a bit too big. Let's drag this down. Yeah, that's the kind of magic I want. Let's try it with a crown looks cute. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I will probably polish it a bit more later, like adding a soft skin retouch. I'm thinking about like glowing eyes and of course I also still want to add some information about the stones. You can try the snap code and just test it for yourself. So I think that was it for this video. Of course you can do so much more with this. I just decided to keep it simple and use the behavior scripts. If you want to do more complicated things, you can, for example, go in here and call your own global function like global my class is detected and pass, for example, the current class in here. If you have your own script somewhere, let's copy this. You can just make a new global function like this. And pass the detected class in here, so let's say current class and let's just do a little print here and see what it gives us oops not like this current class and for example amethyst gives us a two and a four let's say you have an array like let's call it stone infos and that is an array of descriptions for each stone. So the background doesn't need any description, I guess. The clear quartz, you could say, this is a clear quartz. And you could do this um, for the other stones also. This is a stone. Okay, this is really dumb. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Now you can print out the stone infos 
um, on that index, like current class index. Now, if we detect the amethyst, it can give you this is an amethyst. So you can very easily detect the current class here and call your own function and make your own scripts. Now we reach the end of this video. I really hope this was interesting and helpful to some of you. If it was, please leave a like and subscribe for more AR content. I really appreciate that and maybe, just maybe, I will be able to make more crazy upgrades to this channel, like fancy camera or a ring light. Let's make it happen. I see you in the next video. Bye!